Hey Snackers, this is Kareem Iskander. Hey everyone, Matt DiNapoli here. Welcome to episode 158 of Snack Minute. Uh, this week we're going to be talking to Jesus about uh, what's on, all on our minds, which is AI. But before we get into that, Jesus, would you mind introducing yourself? Sure. So I'm Jesus Jeska, developer at Botcade with DevNet. I work with SP Produce, XR, uh, NSO, Crosswork. But I'm really interested in programmability and now, of course, AI. So uh, we asked uh, we asked Jesus here to join us today because um, I knew that he was kind of digging into some of the tooling around AI and specifically Langchain. Um, you guys might have heard of that uh, a number of times from various different places and are trying to kind of figure out what it is and where it can play in. So Jesus, um, would you mind give us a little bit of a background on Langchain and then um, kind of how you've been using it for the last few months? Sure. So Langchain is one framework that we can use to interact with LLM programmatically. It's not the only framework available, but this is a framework that I like. It's based on Python and JavaScript. And I like because it's agnostic. So if you develop for one LLM, you can then switch and use another one. And here, for example, on my screen, you can see like the components that we have with Langchain. So we have Langchain, the core. We have LangGraph, which is for using multiple agents. We also have several integrations, and you also have Lang Graph Cloud. Now, Langchain is a complete framework, so it's going to take a while just to go through everything. So I'm just going to focus on one thing, which are tools. So what are Langchain tools? Basically, a tool is a way the LLM can interact with anything. And um, by anything, I mean you can provide a tool a ways to interact, I don't know, to do a Google search, to interact with a database, for example. And here on this screen, you can see several integrations that already exist. For example, if I scroll a bit below, you can see several examples being Brave, Do.co, Exa, Google Search, etc. But we are interested into networking, right? So when I saw the tools and I started to investigate, okay, what are they? How can I use them? I saw that, hey, if you don't find the tool available, you can create your own custom tool. Oh, cool. And that's where I found quite interesting. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So basically, we can provide the LLM a way to interact with a Python function, or of course, JavaScript function as well. And this opened a new world of possibilities because if you know very well, we can interact with network devices via programmatically, right? Via APIs or CLI if you want to do it. But the thing is, we can use a Python function. So that's when I started to think, okay, yeah, this looks quite interesting. What can I do? And then I remember an issue that I had several years ago when I was alone and I was trying to troubleshoot and it was really, really bad. And I thought, hey, it will be nice if there's an issue and then the LLM can help me, okay, just to give me some tips. And that's when yeah. I got the idea, yeah, let, let, let's create something very simple just to try to demonstrate if this thing works because at that time I wasn't aware if this is possible or not. So what I did basically is to create this example that you can find on Cisco Code Exchange. Uh, it's called AI Network Troubleshooting. Basically, uh, I have some pieces on this uh, demo. We have the network, which in my case is CML, very simple network. I have some observability solution, in this case, the TickStat, which is quite simple uh, and easy to use. Telegram, Influ InfluxDB, and Grafana. And I'm communicating with the network devices via NetConf. And then I'm using LangChain, as of course we are showing here. And I'm using tools to interact with network devices via PyATS, which is the thing that I consider quite interesting. As well, using tools, well, no, actually not using tools, using fast API, I'm able to interact with, with WebEx, and of course the LLM. So there are many components on the demo, so I will just give you the overview and then we can talk more. So you may be wondering how I can use Langchain tools in this case, for example, with PyATS, how that was possible. Well, as you may know, the, the code that we have on Cisco Code Exchange is available on GitHub. So you can also 
come to the top, view code on GitHub. And in my case, for example, here on this directory, uh, the repository, LLM agent, launching tools. In this case, for example, these are some uh, tools that I developed for getting the device health state. And if you see, I'm just importing a tool. In this case, it's a decorator, and I'm putting it uh, upon a function. Now, as you can see, I'm very, very specific on my function. In this case, I'm saying, for example, I'm expecting a device name, and the type is a string, which is quite important. So it helps the LLM to know, okay, what is the kind of uh, string of device I'm, I'm expecting, which is a string, and I'm returning a dictionary. Then I have a doc string, which is super, super important. The more specific doc string that you have in your tools, the easier it will be for your LLM to use them. In this case, for example, you can see I'm retrieving the memory. I'm also saying again, okay, this is the arguments and what I'm returning. And then the tools are expecting the results to be in JSON. At least when I was writing, at the time I was writing the function, that was what I was expecting. As always, check out the latest documentation. But at this time, I'm returning a JSON. And in this case, you can see this is the actual function that is implementing the PyATS logic that is connecting to the device that will grab the health memory. When I was discovering all of this, this is like, a, okay, this is how I can do it. This is how I can link PyATS to LLMs. But I think it's better to see it in practice. I have a quick question, Jesus, before you move on to the demo. Yeah. In the code that we just saw, you had mentioned that the documentation string was um, was kind of the key there. So everything between the, the triple ticks, um, that is something, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here, because I could be misunderstanding it, but that's something that the LLM will take um, as input uh, and help us get to the point where for this particular function, get the memory of a particular device. Am I correct in that assumption? Yeah, the LLM will trust the doc string, so it should be very, very close to what it does. Okay. The LLM doesn't actually know how to connect to the device. It doesn't know that I am using PyATS. It doesn't know that I'm connecting, for example, using CLI. It doesn't even know the command that I'm using, right? All of that is abstracted using functions in Python, so the LLM really relies on the doc stream. That's why the doc streams are key in our case, so the LLM knows exactly what to do. That's what the, the prompt would be. Um, if we were to interact with it in a, in a, in a search box, right? Jesus, does that mean if I integrate Copilot with whatever I'm using here to write this code, I could generate the documentation from Copilot, those, the, the, the prompt engineer engineering that the LLM is going to rely on. I can generate AI generate that and then push it into LLM. Um, so I could streamline all of that via AI. That's a very clever observation, Karin. And <laughs> yes, actually, this is the result of several iterations with GitHub Copilot. And um, I know we are not talking about prompts in this case, but if I go very quickly to my directory, LLM, prompts, this is the prompt that I'm using. It's quite big, so we are not going to go all sure. of that. But also the prompt was the result through several iterations with GitHub Copilot. I was using another LLM to create the prompt that I'm using for with my LLM. So cool. Okay. AI well, uh, yeah, that that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I think that's when we start to get into the argument of of the agentic aspect of this right. is um, now. I mean, for all intents and purposes, it looks like Jesus built a PyATS agent. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see the demo and and be blown away by it. <laughs> I'm using CML, and the topology is, of course, you can find it on the GitHub repository I'm sharing. I'm sharing everything there. Um, for the sake of this demo, it will be something very simple. So I have three network devices, Catalyst. I'm using ISIS because my background is on SP, so ISIS. And basically, what I'm trying to find is, is, is if uh, the LLM can find the issue with ISIS. So I have a observability solution, in this case, Grafana. I have a neighbor ISIS count. So in this case, if the neighbor, or if the number of ISIS neighbor is lower than the previous time, I will have an alert. And the alert will tell the, L the, L the LLM, okay, something happened, so take a look. Let's do it in action. So 
I'm going to Catalyst 1 to the console, open a console. So in this case, let's go to ConfT. Let's see the interfaces to show IP, IP interface brief. I have several interfaces, but only some are on the ISIS part. I'm going to use interface gigabit five, and now I'm going to shut it down. So, so shut this it down. should bring down the ISIS <laughs> interface. Uh, don't do that on a production network. <laughs> Unless you're disgruntled. Or Matt, I wouldn't even know how to do this, Chris. <laughs> That's why you got to take your CCNA, Matt. Ah, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we see it in the in the dashboard. Yeah, the dashboard is already detected that there is an alert. And since I comment, I'm using WebEx on WebEx, you can see I received an alert this from going. Grafana. This is this come directly from Grafana. So, but it is very important. There is a summary that uh, there is an ISIS neighbor down on this device, and that's it. Ah, and the LLM was very quick, so it gave us already what it found. But I want to show you what it did on the background. So as you can see, there are many, many, uh, I would say, texts going on. And basically, the LLM was first, OK, verifying if the device exists, because the LLM was hallucinated. So I had to make sure, check the device exists first. So that's something he's doing. Mm -hmm. And after that, it start to review, do several observations on the devices. It's not just one action. It's doing several actions. So for example, in this case, it's checking the logs. In this case, it's checking the CPU. It's checking if there is some memory issue. In this case, for example, it's checking the interfaces. What is the status of the interfaces? And it's able to see it's at me down. It's doing several actions. And I wasn't interested to give me the whole thing. I just wanted to have like the summary and next, next action that I can do. And it's what, it, what I have on this case. The very summary after a lot of analysis. So in this case, it's already checking that gigabit file is a potential issue. So yeah, I can say, please think of again the interface. Interface, but only if it's part of ISIS. So let's see if this works. And by the way, I forgot to say this is live. Even though you see the recording, this is live. So. Yeah, we are, we are on dangerous path in this case. So as you can see, in this case, it's already trying to connect to the device. It's checking, OK, I can see the configuration of the interface. Yeah, it's part of ISIS. Then I'm going to bring up the interface. And if I go to um, the WebEx, I can see the notification that, yeah, it was turned on. Let's see here. OK, it's still waiting a bit to, to grab it. But basically, turn on the interface. Yeah, you can see here. It, it, there is a bit yep, of delay okay. in the way I implement the netconf. But you can see Please, it's yes. on the interface Fixed it. and fix the issue. Ah. There. Now, um, I can say, yeah, I have some next steps. Hey, uh, please um, execute the next steps to. You're so polite to the, to the AI. I normally don't talk to it that way. I don't think that's for this this uh, episode. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case, um, I just want to verify, OK, ISIS is good. As you can see, it's doing something. And yeah, it, it now checks that ISIS is good. So basically, I know it's quite simple demo, but what I wanted to make sure is OK, how can I use an LLM to help me in an issue that I had a long time ago? And if tools are the right tool to use to interact with network devices and LLMs. And as you can see, yeah, they are quite useful. Of course, the key is always to provide the right context. And this is something that you, as developer, need to take care. I took care when developing my PyATS function on, th on that part. But after that is developed, okay, you can rely on this part. This is, I mean, this is a, a great demo and it and makes a lot of sense. I think there's also, like, if you think about this in from outside of the demo, from a production perspective, where the, the, and this, 
this goes back to one of the conversations uh, with uh, that we had, Matt, with Splunk and the demo that I did. There's a play here where we could actually, part of the alerts that we push out to Splunk from your devices or from the network, we could attach recommendation from the AI on how to, how to remedy. And we can actually mm. have that as part of the index in Splunk. So yeah. as if you're looking at issue resolution and you can search that and you see the, the totally. resolution is something that's normally taking, you, you can take care of, uh, you can automate that process or you can go back to your network and fix it and have the AI fix it for you. So this is really useful. From and then if you're running your own LLM and can tune it, <laughs> then you can even add that into the process as well. Well, um, I, you know, I presume in production, you would have to run your own kind of uh, small language model or LLM. Oh, yes. Yeah. You'd have to pull it out and put it back in. Yeah. yeah, and security reasons, right? Right. So, Jesus, actually, I think our, our snackers would probably like to see more detail into the implementation side of this um, because we, we kind of touched on the Langchain portion a little bit. But I think where, and actually this is for me too, I kind of want to understand a little bit more. The demo was super cool. When we have you back, we'll have you do like a quick, hey, remember we did this um, and kind of dig into what you actually had to implement um, and potentially even talk about, um, you know, what specific LMs you used, what went into your decision-making point there. Um, I think there's a lot of value in, in some of the details, but You've piqued my interest, and I guarantee you've piqued our snackers' interest on this. Thank you so much for for coming today. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have, uh, but we're definitely going to bring you back and dig more into this solution because, um, you know, you called it simple, but it's not. Uh, it there's a lot, lot in there. There's there. a lot yeah. in there that that I think that um, that I think could be hyper useful and um, really grabs our our, our snackers' interest. So. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Snackers. Join us next week for another episode of, uh, episode of Snack Minute. And uh, Jesus, thank you so much. Jesus, thanks a lot. And Snackers, thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Yeah.